brands thinking that plus size people don't want to invest in their wardrobe. Over brands, but also society, viewing plus size bodies as a work in progress, as the before picture, as a transient state. They view our plus size bodies as if we're renting this body. They're not. It's not our forever home, if you will. It's our rent a home now. It can be your forever home if you want to live to like forty two. I guess it, that's like the ultimate goal. Like if you're one of those people that goes, well, I'm not really gonna live past forty anyway. How many people do you know that are like that? How many people have you met that go, I'm not gonna live past thirty five, so it doesn't really matter if I save or take care of myself or really do anything that's productive in my life because I'm not really gonna live that long anyway. But then eventually you do, and you hit that age, and you're like, well damn, uh, I didn't expect to live this long, but now that I'm here, I guess I don't want to die now because I have like commitments and stuff because usually as you go through your life, you realize that you become more and more responsible and the way you thought when you were 22 is not the same way that you're going to think when you're 32 and you realize that maybe you had been making mistakes, so you try to correct those mistakes, but isn't it better to have the information at 22 and maybe correct that course of action while you're still young. And it's really interesting, especially for this particular person, because the way that they look at their fatness is like, I guess, not a problem or not an issue, even though by like every single study and all statistics we have, and even by just simple logic, like two plus two equals four, having the weight on your body and having a double or triple chin consistently it's just not optimal. It's just not something that you should be walking around with on a consistent basis. It's really not a good thing. But, you know, hey, if you want to live in this body for the remainder of your life, which doesn't seem to be very long in accordance to like what most people die of, which is heart failure, because you guys are literally pumping three or four times the amount of like blood that your body should be pumping on a daily basis, because you weigh three or four times more than what you should weigh. But anyway, go off. Go off, queen. More people, most people, rather than not, don't paint the walls of their rent homes, do they? They don't buy furniture specifically for their rent homes because they'd rather save up to invest in like the best furniture they can have, afford, and want for their forever home. And it's the same here, it's that same rhetoric. Why would you invest in lovely pieces that fit your plus size body when you can't fit into them anymore once you've lost the weight? And it's, it's that belief that they think every plus size person is trying to lose weight. I know for a fact that when I was, I don't know, probably a few years back when I was like gaining weight, I remember this like very iconic moment where I put on these jeans and they just didn't fit me anymore. Like the waist and the legs were way too tight. It was because I was muscling up. It was because I was getting more and more thick. And I decided that I wasn't going to buy any clothes because I was in a transitional period where I was still gaining weight. I wasn't at my peak at that particular time. I only had gained like maybe five or six pounds. But that five or six pounds was like massive in comparison to like what I usually would wear. So definitely when you're losing weight, I know that for a fact people hold off on the buying new clothes or getting a new wardrobe because why would you buy clothes in the transitional period when most definitely this is not going to be the time and the place that you're going to stay at. You're going to be you're going to be different in a year, maybe 2 years. So, a lot of people do hold off, and it is very very weird when I see these people talking about the way that they do because you know, you, you're not supposed to be the weight that you are. And when you do buy clothes at this size, it is technically enabling you to stay at that size because why would I why would I want to change myself given the fact that my entire wardrobe, the way I think, feel, and act are all at this particular size? But realistically speaking, you can cut your losses, okay? I get it. Like, this should not be a, I have these clothes, therefore, because I have these clothing items, that means I shouldn't lose weight. No, that's terrible. No, dude, I don't care about the clothes. The clothes are like, whatever, dude. You should 100% be looking at this as like a, I am not supposed to be fat. And even though my wardrobe is at this size, it's okay because I can buy more clothes later on. You don't have to feel like you're imprisoning yourself or look at this like as an excuse because you have clothes at this size. Therefore, you shouldn't lose weight because you're at that size. That's dumb. It's so fat phobic. It's so seeped in diet culture and it's sad and you know what's interesting whenever they bring up the diet culture argument is that i think they fail to realize that so much of this quote-unquote diet culture works in the opposite direction so like their idea of diet culture is literally 
oh, there are companies out there and they're trying to signify people to be thinner because it's more lucrative to, for people to be thin because people are going to be buying like, I guess they're going to be buying like nutritional foods or maybe like multivitamins and other things like that. And I always think, isn't it more lucrative to keep people fat given that that is literally what predominantly American consists of right now? Isn't it more lucrative to have people continuously buy Uber Eats? Isn't it more lucrative to have somebody that doesn't know about nutrition that's going to just eat whatever they want because they think that it's just whatever? Isn't that more like if you if you really did believe in like the dudes in suits and the white tower that are up there plotting against people, wouldn't it be against fat people? Because it doesn't that make more sense to keep you guys fatter, more sedentary, more willing to buy their products compared to the guy that's like going and buying organic whole foods that is like spending $10 maybe at most at, a, at like a, a gym membership or something like that? I don't know. Just my opinion. I think it's always interesting though when they bring this point up because it's always like I think there's more argument on the other side compared to your side. But whatever, dude. Pathetic excuse. And it shows you don't know anything about your plus size clientele. This person always speaks from a realm of like authoritarianism, like authority, like, oh yeah, I know what I'm talking about because I have experience in this and you guys don't because I know more than everybody. And it comes off really, really condescending. I just don't like the way that, like, it's fine if you know more than me on a particular subject, but you're never going to get your point across by like approaching a situation with, here's the reason why I think I'm right and you're wrong because I know that I'm right. Like, I don't like that. Just, you know, just talk like a normal person. I saw a comment on that video um, saying, you know, I would invest in plus size pieces if I had accessibility to them, if there was anything to invest in. And that's 100% the point. Don't get me wrong, there are absolutely, you know, small, plus size, sustainable, slow fashion brands out there, independent brands out there. They are doing the work. But we're talking mainstream. We're talking, you know, I know everyone's talking about the Vicky B mango thingy of all the, the problem oftentimes I see with these people is that they're failing to realize that even though you want these big brands to basically, I guess, side with you in terms of making plus size clothing, it's not like these big brands haven't done that, by the way. Like we've seen the targets, we've seen the the gaps, we've seen these big brands reach out and make plus size clothing. And what came back from that was it's not sustainable. And that when they do make these plus size clothings, um, it's just not only is it not lucrative for them, but it's also not realistic because you guys don't uniformly fit the same sizes a 16x is not going to fit the same as another 16x you guys have different bodies so even if they do make clothing and keep in mind if the, a, a big brand like say for instance target or gap did make a brand uh did make clothing items that were in these sizes they don't usually do that they don't they usually make them at like I don't know, seven, eight X at most. Like you're not seeing more than that at most. Like, and even at those sizes, it's very, very few and far between. So even if they don't make these sizes, they get called out for it because they go, well, that's not inclusive enough. How much more inclusive can we fucking be, dude? Like you're going to represent for the majority of the public for the most part. And then you're adding in like crazy, like high, like I'm a very skinny guy. It's very, very hard for me to find clothes. Generally speaking, not many clothes fit me. It's very difficult for me to find pants. It's very difficult for me to find like t-shirts that actually contour to my body, at least like in a, in a way that I like. Um, but it's okay because I understand that I'm an anomaly. I'm not like the rest of the society at large so i can acknowledge that these people are the opposite like they acknowledge that their bodies are not supposed to be the way that they are and that they still want the accommodation of having their bodies be accompanied in the realms of fashion when in reality i always thought this why do you care so much about fashion when you're literally on death's door consistently day in day out dealing with problems that you can just alleviate right now if you just chose to lose some weight and practice some good eating habits, it would be like completely gone within like maybe a year or two years at most. Some of these people are not too far gone to where they're just going to be able to stay in these plus size bodies for their entire life. Nah, that's your decision. You don't have to be that size. And everyone feels like left out of that. I mean, I'm, I'm not surprised at all, but like also like it just shows how we are not considered um, as a valuable customer to the vast majority of fashion. It, again, because it's just, it, when you guys talk about being a customer, you have to at least understand that you guys are not always going to be the people in the store. When you go into a store, even though I hear this, I, even, even though I hear this quite a bit, 70% of America is fat and then 40% of them are obese. I get it. I do. And then you hear that. 
And then you go into these retailers, right? Let's say you go into a Macy's. Let's say you go into a Gap. Let's say you go into an Old Navy. Let's say you go into any of these retailers. What are you looking at? You're not seeing people that are fat. And if you do, it's like one out of like 10 people. And, and when you are seeing these people, they're not buying much. And the same thing for the thinner people, they're buying a lot. And when you see that, and you're seeing reflections of this and you go, why are there no plus size clothes? Because that's just not what people do. Like, it's just not what it is. It, it, you need to contour your brand to the particular demographic that's buying your shit. So obviously these retailers see that plus size people are not sustainable and they're not buying clothes, at least not to the same degree that thinner people are. And they're going, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. And then plus you guys don't fit in the clothing that we they even sell at all. So it's just not worth it. A, a lot of times these, these companies are just looking at it as like, fuck it, it's just not, regardless, it's just not what we're gonna do. And to be to hear this rhetoric again and again and again, that plus size people don't wanna invest in their fashion is wrong. It's like, whatever, dude, say whatever the fuck you want, but it, that's not reflected in reality. They don't wanna, they don't want, maybe some plus size people. Again, I hate using this word plus size because it's way too ambiguous. Plus size could mean 10, 15, 20 pounds over, or it could mean 300 pounds over. It doesn't mean anything. I don't give a fuck what plus size is, okay? If you're talking about from a general speaking sense, I'm sure that there are a lot of fat people that buy fat person clothes, right? Sure, like if you're 20, 30, 40 pounds over, I'm sure that you buy clothes. But the majority of those people are not the people that are struggling to find clothes. Like if somebody's two, three, if somebody's two, three, 400 pounds, those people are going to have a significantly harder time finding clothes compared to the person that's maybe a hundred pounds at most over. Like those people can probably find many, many options. So it's not that I'm saying like, you're right. Like I'm sure that some fat people are investing in clothing brands that are selling plus size clothing, but those people that are plus size are not the plus size people you're talking about. Those, those like six, seven, eight, nine X peoples are like anomalies. Okay. That's, these are uncanny Valley people. These are not normal. These are oddities. Okay. Those are the exceptions. So yes, fat people do exist. Yes. I think they deserve clothes, but these people at the very high end of the weight category are anomalies. They're not going into stores and buying shit. And it, their fat phobia is showing, their diet culture. Your ignorance is showing. Why is it so easy for these people to just go, your fat phobia is showing, you're just a mean person, you're just a bad person. It's uh, Why are you so victimizing yourself so consistently? Our cult mind is showing. We do want to invest. This is not my rent to home. This is not my rent to home. It, it shouldn't. It should be. Okay, I'm going to keep it a buck. Okay, there are plenty of times in your life where you don't want to look like the way you look. And that's fine. Because guess what? There are many things that you can do. And I've even heard from people that are literally disabled, that can't do very much, that are still able to lose weight. And that's extremely sad, given the fact that these people are not disabled. Or at least if they are disabled, they're not disabled in a very major way compared to the people that I've seen. And if you're looking at your body, this obese body, that's literally day in, day out, most definitely negative effect, negatively affecting the quality of life that you're having, and you're saying this is your forever home, acknowledging that if you lost weight, you would be 100% more healthy, you would be better off, that's incredibly sad because that's like purposeful ignorance. If anything, that just means that you're choosing a worse build. That, that That's really what it is. That's like making a character in a video game and then purposely choosing mismatched gear and then like stacking on three or four times more the carry weight that you possibly can like and you're like it's like playing skyrim being over encumbered having to walk everywhere that's what you're doing that's what you're fucking doing your build is not good you're literally playing on hard mode right now why would you want to do that <laughs> i don't know you just like you're just making it more difficult for yourself if i get bigger if i get smaller it doesn't matter i'm not renting any of those spaces because this is my forever home yeah but that doesn't even make sense if you're telling me that you're going to get bigger or smaller but then you're telling me your fat body is your forever home that doesn't even make sense like you okay i will invest in it at every size this woman is dumb that's like somebody going like oh yeah i bought a computer in 2001 it's my forever computer it's the one i'm going to use for the rest of my life because guess what it's the one that it's the one that got me through this point in my life and it's going to be the one that gets me through the next period of my life oh but like it's no longer being supported and like it's not getting software up to i don't care i don't care it's the one that i'm gonna use like you obviously at some point have to acknowledge that even though this is the one that got you through your whatever point in your life, that doesn't mean you can't get something better. That doesn't mean you can't upgrade. That doesn't mean you can't improve. That doesn't mean that you're not, it's not beautiful. I'm sure it's still beautiful. Like, it's great. I'm sure that I'm glad that you appreciate your body. But you can also improve it. You can also replace some parts. You can also make things better. You don't need to stay with the same thing that you know is 
Maybe you don't know. Maybe you think that it's not, like, not good. I'm sure. Whatever, bro. But this, like, this woman is, like, the way that she talks is, like, actually crazy. Like, I want people to realize this. I'm, I am the most generous person. I'm one of the most generous people probably on the internet. And even when I hear these people, these people are literally insane, okay? This is, like, some straight-up hogwash type shit. This is the type of shit that will get you in, like, a, an insane asylum in, like, 1910 or some shit like that. Anyway. At every size. And I will not have any kind of fashion, brand, industry, individual tell me otherwise. You, you know, this is all it's screaming is, I know I'm wrong, and I know that people have the correct answers, but I'm not going to listen. That's what I'm hearing. Like, I'm going to purposefully ignore real information that could benefit me because you can't tell me nothing. If you give me the opportunity to buy an awesome outfit, an awesome dress, an awesome coat. And, and that's very subjective too. Like most people that are thin that go, this is an awesome dress will universally agree. Like it's, it's few and far between that you'll find somebody that says that. And the same thing with the suit. Like most, most guys will look at a suit and go like, this looks really good. Right. But when you're at a plus size value, dude, and you're a big ass calorie, high calorie individual it's going to be difficult for people to look upon that and go, this is a very satisfying look for you. Because that's not usually how people look. It's what's underneath. You do realize that you're, it's like painting a car. Like you can paint your car in gold, but the car underneath, if it's beat the fuck up and it's like meated up and the windows don't roll down, the door is hanging off, the catalyst converter is gone because some dudes in the fucking back one night took it off because they were trying to harvest the copper out of it and all this other bullshit, like car can barely drive. I don't give a fuck what color the car is painted. That car is meated. That car is dust. That car is literally fucked. So, wouldn't it be better to say, fuck the color, fuck the color, okay? Let's focus on making the car more efficient. Let's work on making the car more fuel efficient, more energy efficient, more, like, make it better to drive, right? That's what we should be focusing on. I don't give a fuck about what the color is. And that's the way that these people are looking at. They're literally piloting body slammed ass cars, cars that are, like, literally deteriorated beyond belief. And they're going, why do you guys never give us the good paint colors, why are the paint colors always like brown and beige? Why does it matter if the colors are brown and beige when your door is hanging off, when the wheels don't even spin? You just you're, you're driving around in a meated ass car, complaining about the, the, the complaining about the color. Get your priorities in check. And it fits. And it's like it's never gonna see like you're you're asking for a lot, okay? I I don't know how big this woman is, but she's got to be like I think she's like three hundred pounds, maybe even a little bit more. You are asking for a lot to be 300 pounds and go, it has to fit, okay? Like, bro, okay, man? You do realize that your body is not shaped the same way as another person that's 300 some change, right? Like, if you're three, let's say she's 300 pounds. If you're 300 pounds and another lady is 300 pounds, you do realize that if they made clothes that fit her at 300 pounds, that's probably not going to fit you at 300 pounds because your body is shaped differently compared to that other person's body at 300 pounds because weight is distributed differently. Genetics are involved. Other things are involved. Lifestyle decisions, whatever. Maybe she's holding more weight in her thighs. Maybe you're holding more weight in your gut. It's not going to fit the same. So you're asking for a lot. Okay, you can't just make the same shirt in 15 different ways to fit against all these different body types. And even then, it probably wouldn't even work because there are more than just 15 particular body types that throw out a fucking bounce. So even then, like you're asking for a lot. And I, I it's crazy as people don't realize that. Some outfit, an awesome dress, an awesome coat, and it fits. And it's like well made. Yeah. And it's gonna last a long time. You're asking for a lot. You're just asking, and I know that you think that this is not a lot. This is a lot. Okay, this is a fuck ton of stuff that you want. Sign me up. Sign me yeah, up. Yeah, I, I know you want to be signed up. This is like some fairy tale land shit you're talking about. Why don't you just lose weight? Like, why can't you just lose weight like the rest of us? Get in shape and buy clothes somewhere else. I don't know what the fuck is wrong with you, dude. Like, how can you sit here and complain so so adamantly over and over again about the clothing options that you don't have, ha that you don't have, and then not see the main solution, which is just lose weight and benefit you and everybody else around you? Our bodies deserve... It just depends. What do you mean by deserve? Okay, look. It just, it really depends on what you mean by deserve. In society, they give you particular things and rights and stuff like that. I think you deserve to be clothed, but you can't just expect companies, private companies, private companies to go out of their way to create clothes for you that are incredibly impractical that will never actually satisfy you because it's never going to fit. High quality pieces, regardless of... You know what? I'm going to say it right now. You know what? I I think I deserve like, I think I deserve like a Lamborghini. I think I deserve 
a bajillion dollars. I think I deserve a lot. Like, I deserve a lot of things, obviously. I mean, I just deserve, I deserve, I deserve. That's all I'm hearing. That's all I'm hearing, dude. And it's like, you're not doing anything. All you're doing is complaining about stuff that's obvious. Size, or regardless of how long you are at that size. I've tried responding to this comment a few times. It's very frustrating to me. That isn't what phobia is. Noun or extreme irritation, fear, or... Yeah, this is dumb. Okay, I'm gonna keep it a buck, okay? Anybody that says something like this is stupid, okay? I don't care if you think that, like, you're you're playing semantics. That's really what it comes down to, bro. Everybody knows what phobia means, all right? Arachnophobia means you have an irrational fear of, of, of spiders, but... When you do fat phobia, dude, come on. Like, we, we live in the same reality. Everybody knows what that means. Don't act, don't try to act like this is like you're smarter than somebody because somebody's using a different terminology depending on, nah, dude, we all know. Like, nobody's scared of fat people. Like, what can they do? Like, fall down on the floor, maybe like lay on you like they're mule near themselves. You can't lift them up. Maybe. But most of the people that talk about fat phobia, you know what they're talking about. You know what they mean. Anyway. I mean, I constantly find that... The type of people who are utterly unwilling to listen with intention, to listen and hear for understanding, for coming closer together, for finding middle ground, for solving problems together, are the same kind of people who have been making this same comment. It's just bullshit comment, dude. They're, they're, this, I wouldn't even take this comment this serious. Like, is it, this person's literally just trying to annoy you and you fell for the bait. Like, <laughs> just what it is. You made a whole response video to this shit, dude. How many times have you heard this exact thing? It's like somebody going like, oh man, you're being homophobic. And you're going, bro, how am I homophobic? Like, I think gay dudes are awesome. I'm not scared of gay dudes. It's the same thing. Like, nobody says you're scared of gay dudes, but you know what they mean by homophobic. Like, they know that you're, you're some, you mean, like, oh, I, I, you, you don't want to be around gay people because you're afraid they might accidentally suck you off or something like that. For 20 plus years, I get it. We get it. People colloquially use terms in a way that doesn't necessarily make sense when you look at the semantic definition of a term. True. Or it has transformed so we can say fat phobia. It's like somebody saying gay. Like somebody saying like you're gay and then somebody goes, I know I'm gay. I'm super gay. I'm really gay, matter of fact, because that means I'm happy. That means I'm ecstatic about life. Like everybody knows. Okay, look, like fine. It, it meant something at one point, but it no longer means that thing. And like if you use that in a particular word in, in, the, in like the way that it was used like 100 years ago or more, um, you can use it like that. But nobody's ever going to look at it like that. You can just understand what people are saying. You can say anti-fat bias. You can say implicit bias. You can say discrimination. Right? We live in a world in which the fear of it being okay to be fat is so overwhelming for good reason i also want to point out that she's wearing a dr pepper shirt which is probably not, probably not given not good given the fact that she is obese um but yeah uh, being fat is overwhelmingly negative in our society because our society is not built for people to be obese uh our, us as a human race are not built for us to be obese like i know i know there will be people out there that say well david how can you say that human beings were not built to be obese when obviously we have people that are obese that are existing like I agree these people do exist but just because something is possible doesn't mean it's supposed to be like that if that makes any sense like you can hold a lot of fat on your body and to a certain degree I agree that you were supposed to hold some portion of fat on your body for extreme measures and things such and so forth just in case you were caught in a famine or you were caught in a place where you weren't able to eat for a few days maybe so you had that extra fat on your body that you could have used for storage but um, I think it's really crazy when people try to make that case, looking at people that are like 400 pounds or 500 pounds or 300 pounds and then going like, see, this is possible. It should be okay because this is happening. Dude, that's crazy, bro. This person could barely fucking walk, okay? And you're talking about it's necessary or it's completely fine for this to happen because it's like in our genome to hold more fat. It's ridiculous. It's really ridiculous, matter of fact. But there's a reason why nobody wants to be fat. Not even fat people want to be fat because it's not good it's it's literally a detriment to your health you're literally living life on hard mode that we think it's okay like i agree with them i agree with the uh, this this the, what she was talking about this though this is like this is a dumb comment to verbally abuse 
physically abuse. It, uh, verbally abuse is probably okay. I think people should be able to say whatever they want to say. Um, I always would err on the side of being nicer, though. But if you don't want to do that, like, feel no, you should feel no reason not to. Unless you're working for an establishment, somebody's employing you, and you have particular rules in place, then sure, maybe abide by those rules. But if you don't want to, you don't have to. Um, we live in a free country, honestly speaking. Like, you know, this is one of the few countries where you can say whatever you want. I mean, live, we live in a country where I can say something like, dude, uh, Joe Biden got a small meat. Like, I can say that. You know what I'm saying? And nothing would happen to me. But if I was living in, like, another country, maybe, and I said that about, I don't even know, like, could you, maybe you could say that in, just, like, Canada. Maybe you can go to Canada and be like, dude, Justin Trudeau has got the smallest meat on record or whatever. Maybe you could say that and not get arrested. But in other countries, you can't say that. You will get arrested. Like, if you're in Russia and you're like, dude, I'm going to keep it a solid buck with you. However you're going to say this in Russian, I don't know. Go, Vladimir Putin, smallest meat. Smallest meat ever. I don't care what anybody says. I saw it small just complete even when it's bricked up small i don't care what anybody says you get arrested probably emotionally abuse fat people yeah the physical abuse i wouldn't agree with i don't know who's physically abusing you can you please tell me what you mean by physical abuse what does that even mean like what making you walk maybe like hey bro um we need you to like walk to like the end of the hallway to get us some coffee or like can you do that no you can't do that is that physical abuse for you to walk somewhere maybe i guess i mean technically if that's what you want because like the joint pains you're probably doing and like the impacts on your kneecaps are probably gonna be way harder than it would be for me but anyway we think that it is okay to harass them to discriminate against them you i don't I, I really dislike the word discrimination because it's used so frequently nowadays and so many of these people will sit there and say it's wrong to discriminate when in reality a lot of these people will discriminate every single fucking day like every single day um i'll give you a good example i discriminate every single day when i go to the grocery store because i see bread that's on sale compared to bread that's not on sale and i go yeah, I'm just going to get this bread because it's like a dollar cheaper or like sometimes eggs will be on sale and I'll get the cheaper eggs that are like basically the same thing. But I'm going to discriminate against the higher price ones because they're cheaper. And I don't think it's a good idea to discriminate against people that have things about them that cannot change. But even in certain scenarios, that literally might be OK, too. Like oftentimes we discriminate against men going into the woman's bathroom because they have penises. Right. Like you can't do that. That's not something that you can do. And that's not something that these guys can change. They can't change having a big meat. But we still discriminate against dudes going into women's bathroom and vice versa. But that's okay. Because, like, in society, we do discriminate based on things that people cannot change. And that's okay. And this is one of the reasons why I hate when people use the word discrimination as a catch-all term of, like, badness. It's not always bad to discriminate. I discriminate against people I don't want to date, okay? So many times, I remember I talked to this girl that had, like, three kids and she was only, like, 20. And I was like, yep, not going to work. Nope, discrimination right there. Don't want to talk to her. And that's okay because I didn't want to do that, but I'm discriminating against her. It's fine. It's okay to do that. So even this person, I feel like, probably agrees with that idea we discriminate against things all the time um only in this particular scenario where you have a problem with it but in every other scenario you're completely fine with it to harass them to discriminate against them we live in a world in which i do not get jobs because of the way that i look that's a you know it's just a very interesting way of saying that like the wording is very particular I didn't get, I can't get jobs because of the way I look. If you close your eyes and you had no prior context and you heard somebody say that, you would think, oh, racism. This is racism. When in reality, no, it's not racism. What it actually is, is I'm not surprised. What job were you applying for? Because if you're doing a job that physically demands you to do something and you're fat, I, I yeah, I, I can believe that maybe your ability to do that particular job is going to be with, within question. Even jobs where you have to work for long periods of time, perhaps maybe like, I don't know, 10 to 12 hours a day. Um, I'm doubting that you have the energy ability, the energy efficiency to continue to do that job day in day out could you do that probably not and if you can it's going to be very taxing for you i know a lot of fat people that are at a higher weight that literally have an inability to work for more than six hours a day and that might be okay for you for certain jobs but a lot of jobs require a lot from people now granted you can you might be able to get by in certain jobs depending on doing like the bare minimum which i've seen that before but like what jobs in particular because if you're applying to be a job if you're applying to do a job where you have to stand up for i don't know six to eight hours a day can you do that can you do that? Can you walk from one end of the office to the to the next all day? Can you do that? No, because it's not practical. Like when I hear these words be said, 
I get it. You're saying that it's discrimination, but it may not be practical to hire you given the fact that your body is incredibly inefficient for the job title that you're applying for. And I think that's dumb when people say this stuff. Like, it just depends on the job. Like, I'm sure there are plenty of jobs that don't really give a fuck if you're sedentary. There are plenty of work at home jobs. Maybe you can get one of those. I don't fucking know. I don't know. There are plenty of jobs, though. What jobs are you applying for where you got denied based off the body size? I do not get jobs. And also, it's the victim mentality, dude. You didn't get jobs because you're fat. Lose some weight, get more jobs. As of the way that it's just like, that's just plain and simple. That I look literally was informed mm -hmm. that despite the fact that I was the most qualified candidate for a position, the way in which I look impacted the decision making process. Yeah, that happens all the time, dude. Literally all the time. You know that when people apply for jobs and they have face tattoos and they get denied because they have face tattoos because they're going to be in positions where they have to talk to people? Yeah. Yeah, dude. Guess what? Discrimination based off how they look. Can you believe that? Oh, man. I can't believe it, man. It, you know what else is really crazy, too? To be a professional male bodybuilder, women get denied that. You know that? Like, oh, wow. You're a, you're a woman applying to be in the men's league? Denied. It is what it is, right? No. Is that discrimination? Yes, it is. Of course. We we literally disqualify people based off of their their what they look like all the time. So this is not an anomaly. I understand that you're feeling like you're being particularly targeted for this. You're not. This is not unique to you. This is something that happens to everybody. But you can feel like it's negative. You can feel like it's bad. And sure, I guess it could be bad depending on where you're getting discriminated from. Like if a job was like looking at a resume and was like, oh, what? Oh, my God. God, this guy is, this guy is a money printing machine. What? He's going to make us half a million dollars in just six months. And, he, and he's only asking for a hundred thousand a year. This is, this guy is just a money printing machine. Oh, he's a black man. Then that's a problem. That's a problem, right? That's a, that's most definitely an issue. You're, if you're disqualifying some, if you're disqualifying somebody, based off the color of their skin when that has absolutely nothing to do with the job title then sure that's discrimination on a um actual problem problematic level but if you're applying for jobs if somebody's looking at your resume and going wow this person's really qualified and then they see you show up and you come in like this you know and then you sit down and when you sit down the whole room shakes they're gonna look at that and go ah, oh, yeah you were like really qualified but then i looked at you Nah, it ain't gonna work. Um, you're not gonna be able to do what we need you to do. I, I can see that happening, and that's not inherently bad. It's just something necessary. Like, do you want do you want establishments to just hire people because they feel bad? No, obviously not. They have shareholders. They got people that are around them that need jobs that need to be paid and other things like that. So no, dude, no. Made them believe I should not. What do you mean, made them believe? <laughs> not have that job victim mentality bro and you know what i really love about these long pauses too sometimes is like they'll look directly in the camera as if they said something impactful when the reality of the situation is it's probably justified uh, most of the time why because you were fat and you probably couldn't execute the actual job performance or like you couldn't actually do the job based on the the body size that you are i'm sorry that like physical limitations are a thing but they are, especially for jobs, and people want to get paid, and people want to make money. And if you can't accurately fit those descriptions, uh, yeah, just like whatever. I'm actually extremely healthy. Like my doctor really told me, all I gotta do is like keep working out, and I'm healthy. No, but how much do you weigh? And True. What's your height? Well, I'm 285 pounds. Damn. Damn. 285. Damn. Your doctor told you was you was a height of 285. I want to touch on this real quick. I'm not racist, but I know there's going to be some people that say I'm racist for this. No. She needs to put some lotion on her knuckles, dude. That's crazy, dude. Some Like, it's all right. I understand, you know. Uh, it, Sometimes you have those moments where you're not going to be looking the best, dude. And I do appreciate the bonnet. I really do appreciate the bonnet. I do. You know, I think more people should wear the bonnet. But da damn, bro. Ashy. But how much do you weigh and what's your height? Well, I'm 285. If your doctor told you that you was all right at 285... That's crazy, man or woman. If you're not like, if you're like six foot four and you got a lot of muscle on you and you're a dude, I, right, yeah, I right, probably, I, right, right? But if you're a woman, how tall are you, bro? Uh, Pounds. Um, 200, hold up. But how much do you weigh and what's your height? 
Well, I'm 285 pounds, um, and my height is 5'4", five, 5'5". Five, five, yeah, get the fuck out of here, dude. Nah, nah, nah. nah. You, that's obese, man. That's some crazy level of obesity, too, bro. That, what are you talking about? What you mean your doctor told you you was healthy? Who is your doctor? Who is that? Just some random guy you met down the street? Did not, no doctor would tell you that shit. That's crazy as fuck. You got to find a new doctor. That's ridiculous. That, no, 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 no. You're big. There ain't no way a doctor is going to tell you that shit. 285? Get the fuck out of here. Well, I'm 285 pounds. Damn. Um, and my height is 5'4", five, 5'5"-ish five, five between those two. You're still unhealthy. True. If you're going based off the BMI, please shut the fuck up. I'm not going based off the BMI. You're obese. That's a problem, dude. That's what the fuck? What does the BMI have to do with anything here? Like, sure, it's a number on the scale. I mean, sure, it's the number that we can equate to you in terms of the body mass index. But, like, take that away for a second. Dude, 280, you're almost 300 pounds? And you're 5'4"? That's not good, bro. That's not good. And even if we were to judge based off the logic, that'd be like Amberlynn Reed coming on there, huffing and puffing. <sighs> My doctor just told me I'm good, even though I'm 600 pounds. Like, I don't even understand why you guys think being 600 pounds is a problem. Anyway, I just fell down because my ankle rolled on the floor. Anyway, I'm going to be bed bound for the next four months. I can't wash myself anyway. Um, yeah, I need somebody to take care of me perpetually because I can't walk anymore because I'm so fat. But I'm good. I'm really healthy, actually. That doesn't make any sense. I don't care what you say. That makes zero fucking sense. But go off, queen. You're still unhealthy. If you're going based off the BMI, please. I love how she's arguing with herself, too, and she's still losing. Fuck up. Damn. My face was used on natural Whoa. news the other night. To my surprise, I didn't approve it. So let's respond to Dr. Dingle Dongle and all the false news he wants to spread. <laughs> let's get into it. By the way, I'm also 36 and a half weeks pregnant. So I'm going to do this from my bed. GG on being pregnant, dude. Well, that you got to do it every day and you got to do it right. And you can't out train the kitchen. True. Um, but now it's like dude chris cromo coming out with straight facts dude yeah 100 percent. you cannot train the kitchen if you have a bad diet ain't no way you're gonna go into the gym and think you're gonna burn off 5,000 calories that's insane dude if you ate 5,000 in a day and you only burned off a thousand guess what you're still gaining weight like everybody's just gone full fake news eat whatever you want True. it's all a lie you'll be fine what is going on yeah that intuitive eating shit man like people that think that they can eat whatever they want and still somehow lose weight even though like your body doesn't necessarily know what it wants and you know what's crazy about that too why the fuck are we listening to the body's cues when you have a brain like that's dumb like you have the ability to reason and, and what is going wrong well chris i am so happy that you asked you just brought up the biggest misconception about intuitive eating that we see all over the internet, that people think it is just eat whatever the fuck you want. Isn't that what it is, though? I'm pretty sure that is what it is. Like, eat whatever you feel like you want to eat and do it as much as you want until you feel full. Isn't that exactly what it is? Okay, maybe she's going to say something I don't know. I don't care. That couldn't be further from the truth. Okay. People think this because they get exposed to principle number three, which is make peace with food, which means, yes, you have unconditional permission to eat dude okay man so you just basically said that's not true and then said it's true <laughs> all right all right bro all right bro in the same video too all right like the all right man food holds no morality but that doesn't mean you have to eat food doesn't hold morality in this <laughs> sure i guess i mean that's if that's the way you want to look at it but you should feel different based off the things that you eat like you, do you feel okay do you are you gonna feel the same way that you would have felt if you went to Mickey D's and got a couple QPs compared to actually staying at home, making whole foods, making a home cooked meal? Probably not. Like, and if you do feel that same way and you're equating all foods the same, that's a problem because there are obviously differences in food and you should feel difference depending on the food. And that's crazy because we don't even do that on like anything in life. There are things that are obviously better compared to other things. That's like somebody saying like, oh, this light is like, there's no, there's no difference between this light and this light, even though this light is literally a hundred times better and it lights up the room with just one light, but I would need like eight or nine lamps for this room based on this light bulb. That's dumb. Obviously like cars are better depending on how much money you put down on them. You know, like that's everything, like literally everything. So I'm, how do you even get to that? How do you, it's not about food being moral. Like that's a weird way of looking at it, but that doesn't, that doesn't even make any sense. Food doesn't have a 
It's not because it's not it doesn't have a conscience. So obviously the food itself can't reason, but it's you who are reasoning what food is and what is not more valuable. And it, that's not a far fetched idea because we do that with like literally everything in life. Like, oh, I'm going to get a new job because that job is going to pay me like a third more money and I'm going to work less and it's going to be better hours in the sense of like I'm going to have the option to choose my own hours. If that's the way you looked at like intuitive eating, it would be no difference because it doesn't matter. Like what the fuck? I, I, we, do, we don't do that in any other aspect of our life. So, all right, whatever, man. I'm going off too hard. Principle number three, which is make peace with food, which means, yes, you have unconditional permission to eat. Food holds no morality, but that doesn't mean you have to eat everything. That's okay. You don't have to eat any everything, but that's, that's ignoring the fact that if you have the ability to eat anything you want and you're telling me that foods are no different compared to each other – then if somebody said you don't have to eat whatever you want, there should be no disqualifiers based off that food. So, like, I'll give you an example. Like, obviously, chicken breast is very nutritious in, in comparison to, like, what you're getting out of it compared to, like, I don't know, a cupcake. But if you're looking at those two things as equal and they don't have, like, any intrinsic value behind them, then I see no reason why you wouldn't eat the cupcake given the fact that it's going to taste significantly better compared to the chicken breast. And I see why you would not eat those things more often, way, way more often compared to a chicken. Like, you, know, you see what I'm saying? Like, sure, you don't have to do it. But that's like somebody saying like, oh, if there were no laws set in place to kill people, people don't have to kill each other. Okay, that's true. But that doesn't mean that there are going to be like, you don't think there's going to be like a higher proportion of people just killing people? Because there's no law set in place. There's no, like, okay, well, all right, dude, whatever. That's a dumb take. That's a stupid-ass fucking take, dude. Food holds no morality, but that doesn't mean you have to eat everything. And I can promise you that as an anti-diet intuitive eating registered dietitian and certified intuitive eating counselor, we do not tell people to just eat whatever the fuck they want. You just told us that you can't eat whatever the fuck you want. So, like... Okay, well, this woman is literally sending me some hot and cold signals right now, dude. Is that not what you just said? Didn't you just tell me that you can, the food holds no moral, like, I'm, I'm guessing that you meant you don't put moral value onto food. It's a weird way of saying, like, food itself holds moral value, but whatever. Uh, I'm guessing that's what you meant. So if that's the case, then you should be able to eat whatever the fuck you want since it has no actual value. Intuitive eating is an evidence-based practice with 10 defined principles, over 170 studies to date, that helps you reconnect with your body. It includes instinct, rational thought, and emotion. It's obviously not rational thought. There is no thought involved. Your, your guys' your guys's ideology literally binges on the fact that people feel a particular type of way and execute. That's, that's what it is. It's not about thought patterns. It's literally, you guys are literally advocating for people to not even think about it. Which it, which would be the problem because if I if somebody did think about it and go I could choose a cupcake or a nice meal, and then your body's gonna tell you the cupcake, you're literally ignoring the thoughts. But eh, whatever, dude, because obviously the the fucking meal is gonna be way better for you, and you know that it is, but you're just gonna ignore it anyway, or you just like conditioned yourself to believe that it's not, or I don't know. And it helps you feel physically, mentally, and emotionally pleasant in your body. We are in a national emergency around our health in this country. 75% of us are overweight, 42% are obese. We're in a metabolic health crisis. Hey, Marky Mark, I don't know if you knew this, but the leading cause of death is not the size of somebody's body in America. Okay. It is heart disease, but- Get the fuck out of here, bro. Get the fuck out of here, bro. That's, that's, that's an interesting statement. It's not the size of your body, it's heart disease. And there's no correlating factor between those things at all. Like there's just not, so like being overweight, is not going to increase the chances of you receiving a heart attack? Really? Really? That's, huh. Because I could have sworn just from basic knowledge and common sense, like you were just saying earlier, that if you were walking around double or triple how much you should weigh, and that means your body has to pump way more blood and has to use your way more energy to like push your body through the through its life, that would put a, lar a larger strain on your body, on your heart. Hmm. And the foods that you eat as well, Ah, man, I could have sworn that it, no, I guess not. Uh, I guess it, I guess it has nothing to do. Are you dumb? Are you actually dumb? All right. All right, bro. But it's not the size of the body. And they, 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 because these people don't, it's, it's really shameful that I noticed, but because these people don't think that there's any correlating, correlating information between 
the size of your body and the illnesses that you could receive from those things. Because the way they look at it is there are no particular or specific diseases or illnesses that are that are attributed to being obese that other people's can't get. So like diabetes, for instance, type two diabetes is something that's obviously clearly attributed to people that are obese or fat, but thin people can also get type two diabetes. Therefore, that should, that's not, that, that, that doesn't mean anything. So like fat people don't get, fat people are not getting it because they're fat, even though, even though on the averages, fat people are getting it way at a larger degree compared to thin people. That's the way they look at it. They don't look at averages. They don't look at the actual numerical numbers of it. They just see like, oh no, but like, see, thin people have it too. So therefore it's not something that happens with fat people. It's dumb. Like, you know, the way they're looking at it is like thin people also get heart attacks. Therefore, uh, thin people and fat people also get heart attacks. Therefore, it's not something specifically attributed to being obese, but they ignore the fact that the people that are getting heart attacks that are thin are usually people that are like above the age of 60 that have lived a long life compared to fat people that are more likely to get heart attacks before the age of 30. <laughs> yeah. All right, man. Like I think it's a pretty big difference, but body in America. It is heart disease, but it's not the size of the body. And did you know that the second leading cause of death and mental illness is eating disorder? Now Ugh, you really, I thought it was like car accidents, man. Uh, I, but she had to, she threw something in there. She, did you, did you guys see it? Did you guys hear it? Listen, do you know that the second leading cause of death and mental illness, the second leading cause of death and mental illness and mental illness, you got to pile those things together to try to make why would you, man, <laughs> why did you do that? I wonder, why would you specifically talk about the causes of death of somebody and then pile on the first point and then pile on something on the second point to make it seem like it was a lot weird, it was a lot worse than it actually was. That's disingenuous of you to pile this, the mental illness and, and, and death is, is this eating disorder thing. Okay is eating disorder. Now, while we're on this topic, let's talk about one of my favorite studies out of the American Heart Association. It was done in middle-aged women, and it showed that people who yo-yo dieted, aka lose weight, gain weight, lose weight, gain weight, lose weight, gain weight, had a higher risk of heart disease than those who did not diet and stayed the same weight regardless of the size of their body. People that yo-yo diet compared to people that are fat I'm sure that when you yo-yo diet for a long period of time, that could probably do something to your body that probably isn't the best. But the alternative is staying in an obese body that may or may not be at an increased risk, which it is an increased risk of having also heart failure or heart disease. That's going to be there. But like, what's the alternative? Just doing nothing? Just stay in your over overweight, obese body because the alternative is like you might die too? Sometimes I think, where, these, where are you getting this, like, where are you getting this logic from? Like, that's like somebody saying you shouldn't drive a car because if you drive a car, there's going to be an increased risk of you getting into a car accident. Yeah, I know. I know. But, like, I got to get to work. So, okay. There's an enormous effort by the food industry to confuse and confound the public. And, and they've created this movement, this anti-diet movement. The food industry did not create the anti-diet movement, but I'm not going to waste my breath. That's a factual statement that they, I mean, they may have not have created it, but they're most definitely benefiting from it because like people that are, if you're, if you're working under the assumption of like, I'm going to intuitively eat, intuitively eat, and that means I'm just going to eat whatever the fuck I want, whenever I want. And you already had a problem with being obese. It's just going to make it even worse because you're going to be dialing up Uber Eats every five seconds and ordering like Mickey D's and shit breath here educating you when you could go online sir that's f i don't like it when people say you can just go online and you can do your own research isn't this entire video trying to debunk what these guys are saying so if that is the case why the fuck are you hitting them with well even though i'm right here and i have the information on hand and i can say whatever i want to say right now that would perfectly debunk what you have to say instead i'm not going to do that because you could just google it that's not that's not that's not how you're supposed to do it, okay? You, you're you here with me now. Why can't you say it? If you're going to prove a point, why would you ever go, just Google it, bro? No, man, I'm not going to Google it. I have you. You're making the point. If you're making the point, give me the reason. Why the fuck are you making a point if you're just going to go Google it? Okay, whatever, bro.
and look this up yourself before you hop on a national news segment. How about say it yourself before hopping on a fucking video and trying to dispouse things that guys are saying on, on the news channel without actually saying anything at all and your, your, your answer to it is go Google it, bro. The fuck, dude? You're, you're doing something worse. At least that guy's coming with actual information. What are you doing? Just like, go, go Google it? Or they're paying influencers. Influencer? I'm a registered dietitian. Dude, certified. People might not just be talking about you, dude. Fucking, it, it's a general term, man. Okay, first, man, what the fuck are you talking about, dude? It's a fucking general term. What are you doing right now? What is up with this woman, dude? We're just looking for problems? Every Just hooking onto the most random shit? All right, man, whatever, bro. Whatever, Segment. dude. Or they're paying influencers. Influencer? I'm a registered dietitian, certified intuitive eating counselor, yeah. certified personal. Yeah, you said that at the very beginning. I don't know why you got to say it again. It's just like you're trying to flex to us or something like that. Yeah. Trainer and the founder of Fine Food Freedom, which is a online, completely 100% virtual, private practice made up of a team of 13 registered dietitians that helps people heal their relationship with food and body. Who are not transparent to promote eating all kinds of junk online, saying it's fine to do without any inhibition. Oh, Marky Mark. This is where people really misunderstand what intuitive eating is. Just because we are a registered dietitian telling people that they have unconditional permission to eat does not mean that we are promoting eat all the food all the time. Yeah, you may not be promoting that, but that's actually what it's doing. Because if you're telling, by very definition, intuitive eating is eat whatever you want when you feel it and stop eating when you're not hungry anymore. So if you're saying this, if you're saying like, we're not telling people to do that, but that is the mission statement. That is exactly what it is. I mean, you can say that, but that's actually what it is. That That is what it is. So, I mean, you could say whatever you want, but that's, that's irrelevant. As a registered dietitian in session, we help clients connect their body's internal cues so this would be things such as hunger fullness which are compensatory responses that we turn off after years and years of dieting what is it dieting or is it <sighs> i have a problem with intuitive eating because for one it may not be the worst idea if you already have a good grasp on eating but so many people that are already like obese or have problems with uh, increased fat on their body probably already have a problem with over overconsumption of food. And what I mean by that is if you have already spent your entire life eating double or triple the serving sizes that you should have been eating and you do that consistently. And now because you've built up this tolerance of eating crazy high denominations of food, because most of these people are doing that because they've made, they maintain increased body sizes for potentially a decade or more of their life. That means if you bestow upon these people the intuitive eating and tell them eat whatever they want, whenever they want, whatever they want, and stop when you're full, these people have already been doing that for such a significant period of time that when they eat whatever they want, it's going to be at such high quantities that it's probably going to make it even worse. It's going to exacerbate the problem that they already had to begin with. So that's the issue. It may not be bad for somebody that has a good understanding of what nutrition is or food and somebody that can like actually understand it, but for somebody that is actually having problems with it, it's not good. It's actually harming them. We're listening to these external influences instead of trusting our own body. I don't understand this idea of trust in your own body. Like, what do you mean trust in your own body? Like, what about those times where I'm at the grocery store and I get erections and I'm like, I got to beat this shit up right now. I'm not going to trust my body because even though my body wants to get, I'm, I want to beat my shit up a little bit. I'm not going to do that because I'm on public. And obviously I, I'm using my brain over my body. Like, I get it. Like, trust your body in like a... <sighs> I don't know, man, like, sure, like, you have a pain, maybe it's, like, serious, go to the doctor, sure, but you should also be using your brain and reasoning, is this pain something, like, how many times, bro, I don't know, man, this is such a weird way of trying to, like, rationalizing diets, is, like, use your brain, first and foremost, you should always be thinking about things before you do them, and if you're, like, I don't know, man. This is a dumbass fucking take. We also help our clients learn how to feel satisfied from food again. How do you how do you how do you learn to feel satisfied, dude? How do you do that? I think the most of the time we're talking about food, dude, it's it really just comes down to making better dietary decisions and retraining your body. Cause so many people, for instance, I know that I used to drink a lot of soda, but when I stopped drinking soda and then one time I was like, eh, let me just have a soda real quick, and I put it in my mouth, I fed my mouth with soda. It was terrible. And why did it feel, why was it terrible? Because I retrained my body to actually intake like actual food and water and nutritious stuff as opposed to terribleness. And sometimes that just takes a little bit of effort and understanding. But 
I, don't, I mean, whatever, man. And, and develop healthy coping mechanisms so we're not turning to extreme forms of restriction or binging. And they're saying we shouldn't shame anybody. There's no bad foods. It, it's bad to tell people to not eat junk because it shames them. Well, this is correct. You should never feel guilt or shame. Yeah, so you can't say that. You can't say that and also in the same breath tell us that that you are trying to help people understand this and understand that if there is no value based on these foods and you can eat like the honey buns or whatever the fuck compared to like a nice i don't know breakfast meal th those two things are the same to you even though they're obviously not the same nutritionally that's fucking dumb you, you you're literally contradicting yourself for eating any one specific food or any amount of food so like if you ate if you ate 4,000 calories of Rice Krispie treats, which would not be very hard at all because, like, I think each Rice Krispie treat is, like, three to 400 calories, you can eat, like, 10 of them and they'll be good, which is very easy, I think, right? Compared to eating a lot of, like, a, of an actual meal, like chicken breast, some rice, some beans, whatever the fuck you add on the side, whatever, that's going to be significantly harder to eat a lot of because you're filling yourself up with something that's not so dense in the calories but it's most definitely dense in the terms of like how much food you're getting. So, and it's just, no, that's just dumb. This person's dumb. I don't care that somebody said something to you. You didn't actually debunk anything. If your examples that you have are Google it, bro. And, oh yeah, just because you can do something doesn't mean you should, which I always agree with. I think that's true. Just because you can do something doesn't mean you should, but you're literally advocating for people to do the should because they can. That's literally what your guys are telling us. That's dumb. That's dumb. You can't even make your own points here. But regardless, guys, we're going to end the video here. If you enjoyed today's video, I'd appreciate it for everybody to leave a like, comment, subscribe, sharing the video, all those things I'd appreciate tremendously. So if you could do that stuff for me, I would appreciate you tremendously. If you watch the video in its entirety and or you're here right now, leave it down below by typing in water, which is what I have right here, which is what I've been indulging in. And I love water. I hope you love water too. It lubrifies you. It it gives you that good succulence. It makes you more anabolic. It fills you up. It gives you more reason to be amazing. And I know you're amazing. I know you're amazing and you smell amazing daily. I don't even think you need to wear deodorant because of how good you smell. Your organic scent is better than most. But anyway, guys, we're going to end the video here. If you want to check out my social media, it'll be linked down below in the description. It's just my instagram twitter discord all those things are going to be in the description of this video and the description of the channel if you want to follow me on any of those things feel free to do so i'm almost a thousand followers on instagram so if you can help me get to a thousand on instagram that'd be cool it's a milestone and uh but if you don't want to that's fine too enjoy the rest of your day guys 